In this video, I would like to provide an overview of the Componential Theory of Creativity as set out by Amobile. This will include a brief history about the theory, how the theory is constructed, and what it is used for. I would like to begin by focusing on what is the Componential Theory of Creativity and where did it come from? Well, it was formalized by Teresa Amobile in 1983. In short, it is a theory or framework which is used to explain certain factors which, in, which can influence a person's level of creativity. To quote Amobile, the framework describes the way in which cognitive abilities, personal characteristics, and social factors may contribute to different stages of creativity. It is one of the most widely used theories to explain creativity. The 1983 publication which introduced the theory is extensively cited. A 2013 paper by Amobile actually notes at least 2,000 citations. If you look in Google Scholar, you will find over 8,000 citations, though the reliability of this may be questioned. One of the key concepts behind the theory is that a person's creativity is not fixed or is not certain. What does this mean? Well, let's elaborate on this a little bit. What it means is that a person's creativity level may change at different points of time, even when facing the same problem. At any specific point in time, a person's given creativity depends on several different things. This will depend on the exact problem that is being faced. The problem domain matters. For example, somebody who may be considered creative as an artist may not be able to creatively solve a problem that is in the engineering domain. Internal factors can also influence the person. For example, how is the person feeling on that day? Are they motivated? Are they feeling sad? External things can also influence the person. Are they in a in supportive environment which actually values creativity? Or are they in a situation where creativity and innovation is not given much high status? All these factors are things which can influence a person's creativity. And this is set out in the theory as we will now explain. We will now discuss the Componential Theory of Creativity. There are two primary concepts which are used in the theory. The first is that the theory nominates that there are five primary stages of creativity or problem solving. These are problem or task identification, preparation, response generation, response validation, and outcome. At the conclusion of the outcome stage, the process will either end or return to a previous stage in the sequence. The second concept is that the theory nominates that there are three components which can influence creative performance. These are task motivation, domain relevant skills, and creativity relevant skills. Please note that I will provide an in-depth analysis as to what each of the components incorporate later in this video, so if something is not clear in this slide, hopefully it will be later. What the Componential Theory of Creativity does is demonstrate how these stages of the creativity process and components which influence the creative performance relate to one another. First, we can observe that task motivation is related to domain relevant skills and creativity relevant skills. In order for a person to engage in enhancing either of these components, the person first needs to have the motivation to do so. Task motivation can also be influenced by external factors, including the social or surrounding environment. There will be more on this information later. In regards to task motivation, we can see that this component influences stage 1 and stage 3 of the creative process. For domain relevant skills, we can see that this component only influences stage 2, preparation. Creativity relevant process is more complicated though, as this influences stage three, which is response generation. Response generation primarily relates to the generation of solution ideas to resolve the problem which is being faced. For a person to come up with ideas which may be considered creative, it therefore makes sense that this would be directly influenced by creativity relevant processes. Last, we can see how the outcome of a creative process may influence task motivation. This makes sense when considered. If a person was able to successfully produce a good outcome, it is likely that their confidence and motivation will increase the next time they try to solve a similar problem. In contrast, if a person was not able to produce a good outcome, it is possible that their confidence or motivation may decrease the next time they try to resolve a similar problem. 
Overall, this diagram allows us to observe how various stages of creativity and components of creative performance are able to influence each other. The three components which influence creative performance also allow us to understand how the name of the theory is relevant. Let us now spend some time to further analyze the components of creative performance that were mentioned in the previous slide. As previously mentioned, there are three primary components or factors of creative performance, and these factors are considered to occur within the individual. These were domain relevant skills, task motivation, and creativity relevant skills. In addition, there can be numerous potential external factors outside of the individual which can indirectly influence task motivation. Some of these potential external factors may include things about the work environment, where the person is, how the person is feeling, or many other potential factors. This will be discussed in more detail in the following slides. When the three factors within the individual are considered together, in the space in the middle here we find creativity. I would now like to provide a brief description of each of the primary factors which make up the theory. This information is taken directly from the 1983 paper which introduced the theory. I will briefly expand upon some of the information from each factor which may make it easier to understand. Considering domain relevant skills, I will consider the bottom section, what this depends on. Innate cognitive abilities can refer to the general cognitive abilities that a person may be deemed to possess. Perceptual skills can include a person's ability to interpret information and understand it. Motor skills may refer to the ability of a person to be able to do certain actions. This includes actions which may have been learnt but are now innate, such as playing a musical instrument or even driving a car. Formal and informal education may include things such as school, university studies or even self-directed study. Let's now move on to consider the creativity relevant skills component of the theory. As we can see, this depends upon three main things, training, experience in idea generation, and personality characteristics. In regards to experience in idea generation, this refers to the past experience that a person has in developing new solution ideas to a problem that is unfamiliar or where the solution is not clear. Training refers to any training that a person may have had in regards to the realm of creativity. This may be things such as brainstorming, mind mapping, or even things such as the theory of inventive problem solving. If we look at the top section, we can clearly see that implicit or explicit knowledge of heuristics for generating novel ideas is one of the ways in which a person can increase their creativity relevant skills. So this makes sense why training will increase creativity. In regards to personality characteristics, this may refer to whether the person has attributes which may be considered as being useful towards creativity. For example, if a person is considered as inquisitive or curious, they may be considered as having characteristics which are more conducive to having higher creativity relevant skills. Third, we consider task motivation. Task motivation is very important to creative performance. It directly relates to the motivation that a person has to engage in the creative process at a specific point in time. A person may have all the sufficient domain relevant skills and creativity relevant skills to engage in the creative process, but if they are not motivated at the specific time when they start the task, their creative performance is likely to be a lot lower than if they are highly motivated. Task motivation is highly dependent on a person's attitude towards the task. If the person does not consider the task to be worthwhile, their motivation will be a lot lower. Likewise, if the person does not have a sufficient level of self-efficacy or confidence, they may also have a negative attitude towards the task, which may lower their creative performance. Task motivation can also be influenced by factors which occur outside of the individual. Presence or absence of salient extrinsic constraints refers to the presence or absence of important external factors which may influence task motivation. For example, if a person works for a company or studies at a university which places a high value on innovation and creativity, the environment which surrounds the individual may encourage the individual to be creative. However, if the work or study environment around the individual does not place a high value on innovation and creativity, a person may feel less encouraged or less inclined 
or see less value in trying to be creative. Other external factors may include things such as incentives or bonuses for being creative. Although this may sound like a, a good idea, some research suggests that it may actually decrease creativity as people may be more interested in the incentive, bonus or reward as opposed to the creative product that they may actually create. In the case of things such as incentives for creativity, people may need to minimize their focus on the incentive reward and try to focus on the creative product they are actually developing. This is specifically related to the last point, an individual's ability to cognitively minimize important external constraints. Since the theory was made in 1983, further development has also occurred. In 1988, the theory was expanded to encompass creativity and innovation within organizations. The 1983 model of individual creativity stayed the same. However, an assumption was added. The assumption was that the components influencing individual creative performance also influenced teams working closely together. In addition, a parallel set of components was also proposed for innovation, which we will now discuss. The expanded theory introduced concepts which influence innovation. The first one is resources in the task domain. This is analogous to the domain relevant skills at the individual level. The second is skills in innovation management. This is analogous to an individual's creativity relevant processes. The third is motivation to innovate. Again, this is analogous to an individual's task motivation. So when considered, these three components are similar to the three components that influence individual creative performance. However, these three specific components constitute the working environment which impacts individuals and teams when they are trying to innovate. I hope that this video may have been helpful in helping you to understand the Componential Theory of Creativity as set out by Amabile. On this slide, you will find the primary references which have been used in this, to make this video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.